Hi, Total Recapped here. Today we will be going through the events of the 1994 drama romance movie Forrest Gump, directed by Robert Zemeckis. Warning, this video contains spoilers, so watch at your own risk. Now let's get right into the movie. The movie begins at a bus stop. A man named Forrest Gump introduces himself to a lady sitting beside him. The lady doesn't seem interested, but Forrest goes on to be that annoying stranger we've all met and keeps talking. He compliments her shoes, probably because his looks like they've seen better days. While talking about the shoes, Forrest remembers his magic shoes that his mother bought for him when he was young. No, the shoes didn't make him fly. They were exoskeleton legs that helped Forrest walk because he had a hard time walking. Forrest used to live in Greenbow, Alabama. Their house was quite well kept because Mrs. Gump made banks by using it as a homestay for travelers. One thing we need to know about Forrest is that he is famous for being stupid. He has an IQ below the room temperature if it's measured in Fahrenheit. The principal of his school tells Mrs. Gump the same thing, but she is persistent about giving her son equal opportunities as the other kids. So she does what any good parent would do, she sleeps with the principal as a bribe. Back in the present, the lady is still beside him, reading a magazine. Forrest then continues telling her about the first time he went to school. He remembers the kids not letting him sit beside them, except for a little girl, Jenny. Forrest hadn't seen anything more beautiful than her in his life. He and Jenny have a nice chat on their way to school and eventually become besties. They usually hang out under a tree. Jenny often doesn't want to go home when she is there. Not because she likes Forrest so much, but because her father beats her. One day, while the two are walking, a group of bullies throw rocks at Forrest for being stupid. If that's the rule, half of the world should be having thrown rocks at. Jenny asks Forrest to run away from the bullies as they follow him on their bicycles. Forrest breaks his exoskeleton device but continues running. His legs are magically healed. The power of love and bullies, I guess. Well, one day, Forrest runs to Jenny's house where the two are chased into a field by Jenny's drunk father. The kids pray to God to give them wings. Did they get the wings? No, but God listens, and Jenny is taken away from her father by the police. She then starts living with her grandmother. Eventually, they grow up, but nothing really changes. The two are still best friends, and Forrest is still chased by his bullies. Only now, they chase him in their car. A good thing about the chase is that Forrest is now as fast as Usain Bolt because of all the practice. One day, Forrest is chased through a football field where the coaches are impressed by his speed. So, by pure luck, he gets into college with a sports scholarship. Back at the bus stop before Forrest can complete his story, the lady's bus arrives. But he has another, a friendlier companion who he continues telling the story to. He continues saying that he and Jenny got separated in college because she went to an all-girls college. But being a little bit clingy and somewhat sweet, Forrest used to visit her often. One time, he waited outside her hostel until Jenny arrived with a man in his car. When Jenny suggestively says it hurts to her boyfriend, Forrest beats the shit out of him. The man drives away angrily, and Jenny brings Forrest into her dorm room. All Forrest did in college was play football. He wasn't really good at the strategy part of it, but he ran super fast and even got into the All-American football team. He met President Kennedy at an event, and after five years of playing football, Forrest graduates from college. Who would have thought? Then he is handed a U.S. Army recruiting pamphlet. So he decides to join the army. On his first day, no one wants to sit beside him on the bus except for one man named Bubba. One thing you should know about Bubba is that he is a shrimp maniac. His father, grandfather, grandfather's father were all in the shrimping business. The two become besties in the army and Forrest fits perfectly within the army. One day Forrest finds out that Jenny is performing singing shows somewhere in Memphis. But little does he know, it is not a typical show, it's a strip club where Jenny sings naked. While performing, she is harassed by a man. Forrest beats the shit out of him too. But Jenny is mad at him for ruining her show. Before separating, Forrest reveals that he is being sent to Vietnam, which he refers to as a real country. Jenny wishes him luck and leaves. Bubba and Forrest fly to Vietnam and meet Lieutenant Dan, who asks if the two are twins. He is also very particular about his platoon taking care of their feet. Forrest continues by saying that he enjoyed his time in Vietnam. It was all fun and games until one day when it started raining and it went on for months. Forrest takes this as a learning opportunity because he has seen all kinds of rains. Little bitty stinging rain, big old fat rain, rain that flew in sideways, and sometimes in Forrest's words, rain that comes up from underneath. 
One day, Bubba asks him the million-dollar question. He offers Forrest to start a shrimping business with him. Forrest accepts the offer happily. The following day, it finally stops raining, but then a rain of bullets and blood start. Their platoon has been attacked by an army. Forrest does what he knows best. He runs. He is almost on the safe side when he remembers his best friend and goes into the battle zone to get Bubba. Forrest finds another injured soldier before Bubba and brings him back. Every time he goes in, some soldier asks for help. He even brings Lieutenant Dan back to the safe spot, but he doesn't seem happy about being saved. Quite ungrateful, in my opinion, considering Forrest gets shot in the butt while helping him. At last, he finds Bubba, who has a large hole in his stomach. Poor Bubba couldn't be saved. Now the soldiers are brought to a hospital in America. Lieutenant Dan believes that he should have died in the war. He is obsessed with the honor and pride thing. It turns out that Lieutenant Dan, who took time to take care of his feet, lost half of his legs in the war. While recovering, a soldier teaches Forrest how to play ping pong. And just like that, he discovers something he is good at other than running. Now there aren't a lot of things that Forrest is good at, but the things he is good at and the things he is the best at, like ping pong. He plays it for days, even when he doesn't have anyone to play it with. One day, he gets news that he is being awarded the Medal of Honor for his bravery in Vietnam. But when he runs to tell this to Lieutenant Dan, he sees that he has already gone home. Anyways, Forrest receives a medal from the president, and when asked about his injury, Forrest kindly shows it to the president on live television. Then he is transferred to special services. He travels around the country playing ping pong and entertaining injured veterans. He is so good that some years later, the army decides to send him to China with the All-American Ping Pong Team. They are there for some kind of political agenda. People even say that the world peace is in their hands. Back in America, Forrest was a celebrity. One day out of the blue, guess who Forrest meets? Lieutenant Dan. He has turned into an alcoholic and is in bad shape. One thing remains the same, he still hates Forrest. The two go to a bar where Forrest tells him about wanting to get into the shrimping business. Lieutenant Dan laughs, saying that if Forrest could ever get a shrimping boat, he will be his first buddy. One day, he gets a letter saying his service in the military is done. Now, he can focus mostly on the shrimping business, and only one person can help, Bubba. But since he is dead, Bubba's mother. He gets some advice from her and gets his own shrimping boat. But he could only catch five on his first day. He names the boat Jenny and starts sailing every day for shrimp. One day while shrimping, Forrest notices Lieutenant Dan on the shore. He has kept his promise. The two continue the shrimping business together, but they collect more shoes in the fishnet than shrimp. Until one day when a devastating storm hits. Forrest is shit scared for his life, but the lieutenant is a madman. He gets on the main mast and calls the storm his bitch. The following day, when the bitch subsides, all the shrimping boats have been destroyed. Except one. Which one? Well, take a wild guess. After everyone is out of the business, it gets easier for Forrest and the lieutenant to catch shrimp. They start collecting heaps of shrimp, enough to make all kinds of dishes that Bubba used to talk about. Back at the bus stop again, Forrest tells the strangers that his brand is called Bubba Gump Shrimp. The strangers laugh at the silly man not believing him. The lady from earlier is long gone, and he has been telling his life story to a man and an old woman. The man leaves, and the only two left in the stop are Forrest and the old woman. He continues telling the story to her. One day while shrimping, Forrest gets a call informing him that his mama is on her deathbed. He runs back home and talks to his mama for the last time. He doesn't want to return back to the shrimping business now and leaves it all to the lieutenant. The lieutenant invests Forrest's shrimping money on Apple, which our protagonist thinks is some kind of fruit company. Anyways, Forrest makes a hell of a lot of money and builds a church and hospitals in his town. He also gives Bubba's mother her share. At night, he always remembers Jenny, and lo and behold, one day, she arrives at his lawn. The two start living like they are five years old again. She even gives him a pair of shoes as a gift. Now we know why his shoes were rusty at the beginning of the movie. Forrest asks her to be his bride, but Jenny declines. However, that night she comes to his room and kisses him. We all know what happens after. The very next morning she leaves without saying goodbye. Forrest is heartbroken, and his only coping mechanism is running. So that is what he does. No, he doesn't go running every morning or something like that. Instead, he keeps on running across America. For months, he stops only when he has to sleep, eat, and go to the toilet. People soon start to notice and he is swooned by reporters. Everyone wants to know why he is running. Is it for world peace? For human rights? Is he protesting something or supporting someone? Some people seem to think the act of running is philosophical and that they should follow him. As time goes by, he gathers a lot of followers who run behind him. He spends three freaking years running and suddenly stops one day just because he felt like it. Forrest then goes back to Alabama to his home and is living a simple life when he gets a letter from Jenny. 
She had asked him to come down to Savannah to see her, and that is what Forrest is doing at the bus stop. He is waiting for a bus to go meet the love of his life. The stranger woman tells Forrest that he can just walk to the address as it is only just some blocks away. Forrest finally meets Jenny in her apartment and is given the biggest surprise of his life. How big, you ask? Oh, around four years old. It turns out that Jenny had given birth to Forrest's son, Forrest II. Our protagonist is over the moon. Little Forrest is the smartest one in his class. Jenny also informs him that she is sick and can die any day now. She asks Forrest if he will marry her. Oh, how the tables have turned. In the following scene, the two are in front of Forrest's house in Alabama on their wedding day. One of the guests is Lieutenant Dan, who has prosthetic legs and a girlfriend now. Forrest and Jenny finally get married and live happily ever after. Until Jenny gets really sick and dies, that is. Forrest is sad, but knows it is inevitable. Plus, he has a little and smarter him to take care of now. He has Jenny's grave placed under the tree that they used to hang out at. The movie ends as Forrest drops little Forrest Gump to his school bus. That was my recap of the movie. Hope you enjoyed it. Now comment on what your favorite part was and make sure to hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel. Until next time, take care and goodbye.